good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. When are varicose veins severe enough to go to the doctor? That's what I will be discussing with my guest, vascular specialist, Dr. Ingo Flesenkamper. Welcome to the hello. studio. Hi, hello. When do varicose veins actually need treatment? Oh, they need treatment if they cause symptoms. That's it. Not every vein that you see on your leg has to be treated. But uh, if they uh, do cause symptoms, then they may harm your deep venous system and then they should be treated. And, and where do they come from? We've got a Facebook friend, Lafet Ham, uh, living in New Zealand, and he wants to know if lifestyle has something to do with it or more genes has something to do with that. Oh, it's just both. Okay. The one thing is our Western lifestyle. We don't move enough and we are sitting too much, we are standing too much, and it's better to move. Uh, that's the one thing. The other thing is that for, for sure there are some genetic dispositions and everybody knows that there are some families in which uh, several members already have some varicose veins. And, and what about obesity? Is a high body weight um, contributing to varicose veins? Yes, but that starts from a certain level. It's not uh, smart, overweight is not really causing varicose veins, but if you're really obese, then it might be a cause to reduce your weight. Okay. And, and do all varicose veins need treatment at some point in life? No, I think so. We know people that have real varicose veins that you see and that don't uh, cause any symptoms and then you don't have to treat them. But if they are already changing uh, the color of your skin on the calf, yeah, then you should treat them anyway and if um, they cause symptoms as well. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a bit about different kinds of varicose veins. What about spider veins, those small bluish yeah. parts of veins? Are those actually varicose veins? Yes, they are, but uh, most times they are just a cosmetic point of view and very rarely they cause a burning feeling and then we treat them for sure. But most times it's uh, just cosmetic. But if you have lots of spiders on your legs, then they might be a sign of... Uh, um, of more important varicose veins which are situated below them and they uh, cause a high pressure in the skin and cause spiders and then you should treat them as well. And, and what about the veins we call hemorrhoids? Um, we've got a question from Poland. Claudia Jankowska wants to know, are hemorrhoids varicose veins? They are a special kind of varicose veins but they very rarely have the same origin and normally they are treated by other her physicians. Mm -hmm. What are the warning signs in general before you can actually see the vein coming out? Are there any warning signs you can see at, uh, on your leg? Uh, warning signs on your legs might be spiders, mm. as okay. we said before, but uh, most times uh, there are symptoms. Symptoms in form of a swelling of your, um, of your calves, a swelling that increases over daytime. In morning it's away again and starts uh, in the afternoon. That's a warning sign that might be uh, a varicose vein. And, and we do have a viewer who actually has one varicose vein. Um, he's called Maximilian Ruiz Brockhaus from Chile. And he said he's a very healthy person. He's doing sports and so on, he's a healthy lifestyle, and he got one singular varicose vein mm. on his leg. What do you say about that? I'm sorry for him, but I think he has just had bad luck. Yeah, I suppose he has done everything right, and if a varicose vein appears at this age, probably there is a genetic disposition and it should be treated then. We've just seen radio frequency ablation and stripping, but there are also other methods in treating varicose veins. Could you just outline them for us? Yeah, I think there are three classes of treatments. In the first class, we just have those methods that we call thermoablative uh, methods. That's laser, it's radio frequency, it's seal on our fit, and there are many more. And they all have the same um, structure. They heat the vein and destroy some structures in the wall. It, the vein constricts and disappears after a while. In the second class, we have the open operation. Um, it's a kind of stripping, and stripping is done in very, uh, yeah, quite a lot of um, variations. And in the third class, we have glue, we have foam sclerotherapy, and so on. We call them chemotherapies. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and if there are so many different methods on the market, how do I find as a patient, how would I find the right method for me? Mm. Oh, I think as a patient, it's almost impossible to find out which uh, method is just appropriate for myself. And so I would go to an institution where several methods are available and then uh, the expert should uh, look for just the individual appropriate uh, method for this patient. And, and are there differences in the risk and side effects between all those methods? Oh, I think all these methods have very few risks and the side effects differ a little bit between the methods, but uh, the level of side effects is almost the same. Mm -hmm. And, and if I would start treatment very early, in an early stage of the varicose veins, is it um, the better outcome then? Can I perhaps sometimes skip an operation altogether? Uh, no, I think um, we should look for an operation or any treatment, any invasive treatment in relation to the concerns, in relation to the symptoms. If there are few or no symptoms, we shouldn't treat the veins. Okay. And, and how good are alternative therapies, so not going into the OR and perform some surgery? Uh, what do you think of leeches, for example? Oh, leeches, uh, they do harm and they don't treat a varicose they vein and they uh, really don't help to, uh, that uh, varicose veins will disappear. Yeah? So, they are used for thrombophlebitis, but that's just another thing and even there uh, they can do harm. And what about ointments and capsules you could get in a pharmacy? Do they help for varicose veins? Ointments are not known to really help, but uh, we have some substances and capsules uh, which are extracts from chestnut and they really help, but not to everyone. And we have to look who uh, could try them yeah, and who not. You have just to test them. And next to the ointments and, and capsules, can you do anything at home without seeing a doctor to treat varicose veins? If you have varicose veins, you can move uh, a lot. Yeah, you could activate your lifestyle, and you, for instance, you can uh, take uh, cold showers for your legs. But really, you can uh, just give relief to the symptoms and not uh, make disappear the veins. Mm -hmm. Our viewer Nitka Orji from Great Britain has the same problem like I do. We both sit with or having our legs crossed. Is this sitting position um, harmful to the veins and, and can this lead to varicose veins? I think it can't lead to varicose veins as you are not mm -hmm. sitting all your life in this position. Okay, right. and it's may, Maybe it's not uh, the favorite position, but I think they don't ruin your veins. Okay, so this is a safe way to sit. Thank you so much, Dr. Flesenkamper, for being with us in the studio. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. <laughs>